On this James the Bike Guy, we're taking a look at a Christmas present. But not any Christmas present, it's one I bought for myself, and it is the new Saris H3 trainer. I'm pretty excited about it. But before we get into uh, unboxing, using it, and, uh, and things like that, note a disclaimer first off. This is pretty heavy, I'm not actually going to weigh it, it doesn't matter. But this trainer itself is going to be a heck of an upgrade uh, for my indoor cycling. Now, living in a northern climate, unfortunately there's a lot of snow during the winter. I'm not nearly as active as I should be. And this past year I had a, a job change that really kept me from riding my bike as much as I should. So I've put on uh, some extra weight and I really want to get into the season and be ready for 2020. So I picked up this H3. So while I'm getting it unboxed, let's go ahead and talk about why I might have picked this instead of the Wahoo trainers. Now, my local bike shop that I do business with, uh, they carry both Wahoo and Saris. Now, Saris is uh, the parent company of Cyclops. In previous years, Saris used to be uh, the name for just their car racks and things like that. Uh, but more recently, they've now brought just about everything under house, under the name of Saris, including the trainer. So the H3 is the third generation of their direct drive trainers. And to give you some background, uh, if you've watched the channel before, you probably know that uh, I used to have a power sink, which was a wheel-on version of a smart trainer. Before that, before the channel, I had a Fluid 2 from Cyclops. And my car rack is a, a Saris product as well. I really appreciate the fact that they make their stuff uh, in the United States. And in fact, on one uh, trip, I actually was in Madison, Wisconsin, and I got the opportunity to stop by uh, their factory, which is just outside of Madison. It may actually even be in Madison. And I uh, got to check it out, and I really like the brand. Now, with that said, the... Uh, the trainer itself, I think, is a pretty high quality product too, but I spent some time thinking about this versus the Wahoo. So looking at it, uh, this trainer in US dollars in my area was uh, $1,000. The Kicker Core is $899, and then uh, the full-on Kicker is $1,200. Is $1, and in my case, I just didn't feel like I was getting as much value out of the kicker core as I do this one, and uh, the full-on kicker seems like a really great trainer, but there's a couple of things about this that I really like. Now keep in mind, if you had uh, any interest in some of those uh, really nifty uh, attachments that you can get for the Wahoo, such as the kicker climb or, uh, uh, or the fan, you can't run those with the Saris. So you're kind of making a pre-decided decision that you're not going to have any of those accessories when you go with this. But what you do get is you get a really nice trainer. I think it's one of the slicker looking trainers that are out there. And then the other thing is, is it's going to come with the same performance and really large flywheel as what you would have gotten with the kicker, but for a few hundred dollars less. I also like some of the neat features such as like this setup here, which allows the arms to come out. But you may have seen it had a little wheel block drop out of the front. So I think those are pretty neat features to have on the trainer. Now this, just like the, uh, the full-on kicker, this actually will go as high as a 20 degree slope, give you the resistance for that. This is going to be compatible with most axle types. You've got 130, 135 through axle. My backup road bike I'm going to be using this with is just a standard rim brake bike, so it's going to go on super easy. Free hub body is, of course, a 11-speed free hub body. It does come with a spacer in case you're running 9 or 10-speed. And then you can also get a replacement free hub body to be able to run an XD driver, uh, say if you had a SRAM mountain bike with one of their uh, 10 to 42 cassettes or something like that. But in the packaging, we've got power adapter, which is actually, uh, this is pretty beefy, and uh, I'm noticing here, it's got this little push button. I bet you, yeah, you can adapt how this connects up. So you could get 
that looks almost like a computer wire. So that's interesting. If you needed an extension, uh, I bet you can run one. But anyways, this is the inverter. It comes with its plug. The other neat thing about the plug is you'll see here, it comes with a right angle adapter. And that's in case you're trying to tuck this underneath a trainer mat or something like that. You do have your angle adapter. So that goes together and uh, it's pretty simple. So the next step, because there's really no uh, actual setup to this trainer like we have there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my wheel, pull the cassette off of the wheel because this is a wheel off trainer and I'll go ahead and install the cassette. All right, not that you guys probably need to know how to do a cassette, uh, but we'll go ahead and do it real quick. Basically, all I'm doing is I'm taking the cassette off of my wheel. This is uh, partially worn along with my chain. And it's a good idea, especially if, uh, if you're doing this kind of thing, to make sure that your chain and cassette are worn together properly. Uh, if you have a really worn chain and you put it with a new cassette, that could pro cause some problems. So with a direct drive trainer like this, because I plan on using it quite a bit this season, uh, I'm just expecting that uh, by next season, I'm gonna be replacing uh, the chain and cassette. So right here, I've got a Pedro's cassette tool. Just gonna drop right in. Then gonna use my chain wheel because you see how this can spin. We wanna lock that down into place. I'm gonna do this in Sort of not the most elegant form, but that's because I want you to be able to see what's happening. Uh, but from there, should be able to go lefty-loosey and uh, just start to spin off the cassette. So lock rings come off. At this point, we can lay that down. We'll go ahead, pull up our new trainer, and then it's going to come with a 10-speed spacer on here which uh, we're not gonna need. This is an 11 speed bike. 10 speed spacer comes right off. And uh, from here, it's kind of just the reverse of what we just did. So we'll go ahead and take my cassette, find the large part there. Now this will work with basically any Shimano cassette. I'm using a uh, an Altegra cassette here, not that it really matters. I think it's an R8000 or something. It's just junk off of my uh, my backup bike here. Let's go ahead and toss this all together. Here we go. And last cog's going to go on here in a second. I'll find large spot. There we go. Lock ring itself is just going to thread right on. Now at this point you're actually going to use your chain whip again and that's because we're going to be tightening righty tighty and the concern here is because this can freewheel I can actually move that by hand. I'll show you. So if, if we put that in and we use our tool and we want to tighten down. You see how the uh, cassette moves? So you actually still need to use your tool, unlike you would on, say, a normal bike where that wouldn't be a problem uh, because you'd be holding the wheel. But here, we'll tighten that up. And uh, this is just going to ensure that the cassette doesn't come loose. So next step from here is let's go ahead, mount this up. Uh, right in the front of my house where I plan on using it. So I've got the trainer out uh, placed down where I'm going to be, which is right by a nice drafty window uh, and drafty door opening to my house. So a perfect place where I don't need uh, a fan. Basically, I've put down the trainer. I've got my little wheel block for the front. At this point, all we got to do is really just uh, go ahead and plug in our power adapter. The power adapter goes in on the non-drive side. It's actually got a really long cord. Uh, like I said before, you can obviously uh, add even additional link to it if you want to, uh, but this is gonna be more than long enough. And I think the reason they have that uh, right angle is because depending on how you're routing the cable, the power port comes out on the non-drive side. Uh, in this case, because of where the setup is for me to be able to plug it in, just going to plug it in just like that 
and uh, now we're totally good to go. We're going to see the green light starts to flash. Uh, that's because it just booted up. That'll be the same thing any time that you uh, start to pedal with the bike. But so at this point, my next step is I'm going to use the skewer that uh, did come already with, uh, with my wheels. So you actually do reuse the skewer. That's going to slide through. And let me grab my bike to go ahead and toss right on here. So just like putting any other wheel on, we're just going to go ahead, drop the chain right around, move the derailleur out of the way, and uh, go ahead and let the wheel drop right into place. And then at this point, it's just going to be righty-tighty, lefty-loosey to get the wheel all snugged up. And there we are. The bike is all mounted right into the trainer. Looks, uh, looks pretty nice. Is use our handy dandy tray for the front wheel and drop the wheel right in. And from here, we've got my bike mounted up into the trainer. So with everything plugged in, the last thing we gotta do is get it going to connect up. So this should be pretty simple. We'll go ahead and uh, get everything set up here. So it caught my heart rate pretty quick, caught my controllable trainer real quick as well. Uh, I'm not sure why it's saying no signal, but uh, let's go ahead and hit search. Yes, we want the hammer, click OK. Done. That's nice and connected. Let's see if we can get the hammer connected to our cadence sensor as well. And now we're totally good because one of the neat things with the Cyclops, or Saris in this case, is that uh, you can actually have the cadence sensor already in there. So uh, let's go ahead and just start with a ride. I'm going to take you to some footage of riding the trainer and let you know what I think about it. I'm almost done with my first workout on the new uh, Saris H3 and I figured it would be fair to do the sum up while riding it. So please excuse the out of breath. Basically, uh, I gotta say I really like this. Now one of the big things is the trainer is really no louder than the gears on the bike and in fact with my worn cassette that's on this bike uh, in certain gears you can't even hear the trainer because the cassette's a little bit louder. Uh, so that's definitely really nice. Another thing I didn't show you guys, uh, but the feet are actually adjustable uh, so that you can level out the trainer and make it rock solid. And with that, I mean, no matter how much I really purposely try to bend uh, the bike on the trainer, it is really stable. So much more so than my uh, previous power sink trainer that had the rear wheel on. There's, uh, there's some serious benefit to being able to do it with a direct drive setup. With that said, the particular Swift map that I was using had a few pretty good hills and this has the ability to do 20% grades. No idea what the grade was on Swift, uh, but it was uh, plenty resistance you know, the kind of thing where you really have to gear down and it makes for a real road-like feel. And I think that's the biggest upgrade over the wheel on trainer. Because of the big flywheel, this pretty much totally feels like a normal, you know, bike out on the road. You know, obviously you're not getting the same fun, uh, but it is really engaging. And when you do it with Zwift, 
uh, it's super good. I mean, it's, uh, it's really nice. So while this is only my first ride on the trainer, uh, obviously I'll have many, many more. If something comes up with the trainer, I'll definitely make a video about it. Uh, but one of the things that I really like about Saris is they're in general uh, very durable stuff. I've had so few issues with so many different things that I've had from them uh, that it definitely, uh, definitely is confidence inspiring. So with that said, totally love this trainer. So go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And while you're at it, drop a thumbs up. It lets me know that you enjoyed the video.